got Darren Cow with me. And Darren, um, the UTR series here in Australia has been underway with Sydney, Brisbane and uh, Melbourne, but we're moving states to your home state of Adelaide about to get up and running as well. Yeah, we can't wait here in South Australia because the UTR matches, I know a lot of the young kids here have been looking at the matches going on in Brisbane, Sydney and Melbourne, and they've been jealous and they're waiting for them to happen here. And I hit once a week with a young 15 year old here called Edward Winter, and he's got a pretty good UTR rating. It's about 12.5 for a 15 year old, which is amazing. And he's desperate to get involved into the series here in Adelaide. So he's pumped and waiting for the phone to ring to see if he's actually playing. And I'm, I'm sure everything of the same is going on in WA as well. And it's great that Tennis Australia is putting on these events. It's providing a little income for these players, but more yeah. importantly, some competitive match practice for these players as well, going into hopefully when the Pro Tours start up again. I know if you want to um, get on and watch that, you can watch that through YouTube or Tennis Australia's Facebook page. I, I found it interesting just watching some of those matches because even though you know they've been practicing, it, you can tell that, that match play has been missing in some of these players. Yeah, you can sit on the court and you can practice 50 hours, but nothing replaces a couple of hours of playing a proper match, as you know. Yeah. And it's why it's so important, as tennis players at least, that. You don't just wear yourself out in the practice court. You, you set yourself a schedule. You plan it. You plan the work and work your plan. It's, a, it's a something that Gil Reyes, Andre Agassi's fitness trainer, used to say all the time. And every now and then, you've got to put in those competitive matches to test and see how you've come. If you're not getting those competitive matches, you really don't know how much you're improving or what you should be working on. And that's where these UTR events are so valuable for the players. The way that these players are able to get together and... and match up just talk about how you would be doing that in Simona's case you know she's in Romania you're in Adelaide um are you able to go and say okay I think you should be playing against these these young junior male players because they're going to give you the best opportunity is that what you're doing with her well, yeah absolutely uh, we had to take a look at their UTR rating and work out how competitive they're going to be and because there's no bias between males and females in this particular rating you can tell who's going to give her a good match and who potentially might beat her and it's not good for her to win every single match she plays by the way because <laughs> once you get into the real world and you get onto the tournaments then the matches are not given to her so we make sure that we're putting opponents on the other side of the court that are either going to be really competitive against her or are certainly going to beat her as well so the UTR rating is incredibly, incredibly important when it comes to choosing practice partners. Um, talking about um, Simona and, and this particular fortnight in general, this is the Wimbledon fortnight that you and I are chatting in right now. I saw a picture of her yesterday, um, it was a, a, a faux makeup of her walking out those doors as the defending champion. How's she taken um, not being able to go back there? How have you taken not being able to go back there? Yeah, I know when Wimbledon announced that it wasn't going to happen in 2020, there was a little bit of sadness in all of us. But honestly, it's really just hit home in the last three days that we knew the tournament was going to start. And then you see the social media coming from Wimbledon and all the old videos and all the old matches. And I watched a video that Ash Barty narrated for Yvonne uh, Gulligan Corley. And it was amazing to see some of the old pictures and some of the ways that the old players would talk about Yvonne and how much of a legend she was. And yeah, it's sad not to be there for sure, but I guess the world is going through something much, much bigger. And we're trying to get a control of a, of a virus that's sweeping across the, the world. And hopefully we as a sport will make the correct and right decisions and, and not send players back into zones until we're sure that we can get this up and going and we do it in a safe way. And that's where I think Australia has been a real leader, not only as a country, but also in the way that we've restarted our sport here in Australia and what Tennis Australia does in making these UTR events around Australia. I think it really brings a lot of common sense to the way we go about it and hopefully the rest of the world is watching. Do you think it's going to be difficult for players potentially to have to make a choice about going to the US and playing the hard court swing and or maybe just playing a clay court swing at the moment there's a little bit of time still to go but it looks like players may have to make a choice between one or the other 
Yeah, you say that because anybody that goes to the US at the moment might have to quarantine self-isolation for 14 days if they wish to fly back to Europe to play Madrid, Rome and the French Open. So that's going to be a big decision moving forward. As we know, with what's happened, a lot can change in 24 hours. So certainly a lot will change in the next six weeks. My fingers are crossed that everything works out well and the US Open goes ahead. But you're right, the players might have to make a decision if the regulations stay in place as to what do they play? Do they play the US Open? and then forego tournaments for about four weeks across in Europe, or do they save themselves and play Madrid, Rome, and the French Open? So uh, fingers crossed, the players will have an option to play everything, and we'll wait and see over the next three or four weeks. But as it stands at the moment, uh, still a big decision to be made whether or not the players will go across to the US and play the US Open, uh, because safety, of course, is a big issue. Can I get you to put your coach's hat back on just for a moment again? Um, in preparing a player for that, uh, as we know that, that you will do with, with Simona. How hard has these times been and how much have you had to change as a coach to do online coaching? Uh, because that's what everyone's had to do, online schooling. Um, I've got a son in the arts. He's been doing online drama and as, as one person in a single room with people in, in boxes. How are you coping and how are you um, sort of recreating um, what you would normally do in person? Yeah, it's a great question because we've had to evolve and do things we've never really done as a coach before and, and we've had to stay on our toes. So what I did about five weeks ago was uh, I'm actually an investor in PlaySite and PlaySite's also the company that's televising a lot of these UTR tournaments around the world. And we have a little Go system. So I was able to send her a Go system where she just walks up, sticks a camera on the back of a court through every practice session. And I can sit here in Australia on my computer and watch her live practice every single day, which is what I've been doing for the last four weeks. I can't speak to her. I haven't worked out how I can put I gonna, the microphone at the back of the court. I was going to ask that. Does she turn the mic off? Or? No, I, I want to be the voice of God right behind us. Every time she does something wrong, she hears this voice coming out of a microphone at the back of the court. I haven't worked out how to do that. So play side. We need to step it up and try to find that so we can bring that on. But if I have something to say, I'll either call her coach, Artie, who's across there at the moment working with her, or I'll send her a quick test message after every 10. She likes to take a lot of breaks. So every five or 10 minutes, she'll go to the side of the court, pick up her phone, and she'll get a bit of, bit of a message from me, and we go from there. So I can hear her all the time. She can talk to me from her side, from her side of the world, but I can't talk back to her through the microphone. So the, co the one-way conversation is just like a match, to be honest. So right. she can be having a bad practice session. She can be giving it to me through the microphone, and I can't do anything. I just have to sit here in Australia, and I have to take it. But nothing's changed, really. Well, if I recall at the Australian Open uh, this year, her, her fine to go to the bushfire appeal was every time that she got negative or said something towards you, you find her. Is that is that right, if I remember correctly? That was right. And I think she ran out of money after the first couple of days. So we had to put a stop to that. But uh, look, she's an emotional player and she likes to express how she feels. And it's something that you never want to take that fire out of her belly. And that's who she is. So we just have to pick the right moments to do it. And I think she's become a, a lot better at that over the last couple of years. Well, uh, Killer, as always, good to chat with you. Thanks uh, thanks for your time today. Thanks for your insights on the coaching, but also on um, the, the UTR system, um, educating us on it. And uh, I, I mean, you, you said it earlier, you and I, we've both got to go and get our rating. Get it back out there. Get on the computer again. Anybody can go to my UTR, sign up, get a profile. You punch in 30 matches over a 12-month period, and you and you and I can go and get a rating as well. And I think it's invaluable for any tennis fan out there, regardless of whether you're a kid, you're an adult, you're a club player, you're a coach, or you're an aspiring pro. And especially if you have a dream of going to a college in the U.S., uh, you cannot deal without and cannot survive without a UTR rating. So go ahead and do it. It's really easy. MyUTR.com. Go check it out. Great to chat. Thanks, Killer. Speak soon. Cheers, Todd.